Okay, today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about heterogeneous mixtures. These are mixtures that are not mixed the same way all the way through. Everything in the mixture is not the same all the way through. To review real quick, what is a mixture? Well, a mixture is when you combine two or more substances together, but you do not have any kind of chemical reaction going on. Now, if you remember, if you take two substances and you chemically bond them together, we call that a compound. And the new thing that you've made by bonding them actually has completely different properties and characteristics than the two original substances that went into the reaction. Um, and in this case, mixtures do not chemically bond. Okay, so you have two things that you're putting together physically, okay, and you don't get anything new coming out of it. You just get these same two things that are mixed together. So let me give you an example. <clears throat> Chex Mix or Chex Mix. Okay. If you have Chex Mix, um, basically you have the little peanuts in there and the pretzels and the little, well, what do you call those square things? Those little cereal square looking thingies. And you have the little Cheez Its in there and everything. So you have all these things mixed together in Chex Mix. Okay. Um, when you take each of those individual things, you take the peanuts and you take the pretzels and you take the little cheesy things, and you take the little square cereal looking things. When you take them separately and you mix them together, okay, you get a mixture, and it's a heterogeneous mixture because it's not the same all the way through. Okay? But you don't make, you're not really making anything new. Okay? You still have all those individual pieces in the mixture. You're not creating anything brand new out of it. Okay? Um, that's what mixtures are. Basically, when you take pieces and you put them together, but you don't create anything brand new. And the mixture has the same properties that all the individual pieces had. <coughs> oh, pardon me. A mixture is a combination of two or more substances and there's no chemical reaction, no chemical combination. It's just physically mixing two things together. Uh, mixtures combine physically in no specific proportions. They just mix. And guys, the key with mixtures is that you can separate mixtures relatively easily. You don't have to do electrolysis or any kind of chemical reaction to separate them. Mixtures can be separated relatively easily because the individual pieces in a mixture didn't chemically bond together. They're just physically sitting next to each other. Again, mixtures can be solids, liquids, or gases, or any combination of the above. So you can have a solid and a liquid, a liquid and a gas, a solid and a gas, uh, a liquid and a solid, you get the idea. You can have any combination. There are several different types of mixtures. First, there's homogeneous mixtures. Remember, homo, the prefix for homo means the same. Okay, so homogeneous mixtures mean that those mixtures are the same all the way through. Your first glass is the same as your last glass. Your first handful is exactly the same as your last handful. Your first spoonful is exactly the same as your first spoonful. Okay, We've talked about these in classes in class already. Usually these have to do with things dissolving. Okay, So basically salt dissolving in water, sugar dissolving in water, Kool-Aid dissolving in water, iced tea, the herbs dissolving in the water. Um, all those are homogeneous mixtures. And remember guys, Homogeneous mixtures, okay, also with the dissolving, you have some things that are soluble and insoluble. Soluble means that it's capable of dissolving. Insoluble means that it's not capable of dissolving. Okay. Um, and when you hit the saturation point, that's when you've dissolved as much of the solute in the solution or the solvent as you possibly can, and no more can be dissolved. Today we're going to talk about heterogeneous mixtures. Hetero is a prefix that means different. So these basically mixtures are different throughout. So again, prefix hetero indicates a difference. So these mixtures are not the same all the way through. They are different all the way through. Um, heterogeneous mixtures consist of visibly different substances or phases. You can see that it's different all the way through. You can see two or more parts of the mixture and distinguish and identify between the two of them. Some examples of heterogeneous mixtures, and there are many, many more. Pizza is a heterogeneous mixture. You're taking bread, and you're taking sauce, and you're taking cheese, and you're taking pepperoni, and you're taking all the veggies, and you're throwing them all together and mixing them all together physically okay, to make pizza. 
the first slice of pizza is not necessarily exactly the same as your second slice of pizza. One slice might have more pepperonis on it, whereas another has more onions on it. Yeah. Um, secondly, you can remember mixtures are easy to take apart. <laughs> and when you were a kid, you may have picked things off of the pizza, taken different things away. Okay. That makes it a heterogeneous mixture. The fact that they're physically mixed together, that it's different all the way through, so different slices can be different, and they're easy to pull apart or take apart. Another example, a sandwich would be a heterogeneous mixture. Because again, you, it's mixed and you've got your meat mixed in there and your cheese and your bread and your veggies, but you can pull it all apart very easily. Um, it doesn't, you haven't really made anything brand new. You've just got pieces of other stuff stuck together. Okay? Um, and one sandwich may not be exactly the same as another sandwich. Okay? Um, you may have more meat in the middle. You may have more onions on top. Okay? So it's different. Check Mex, I think I used this example earlier. This is different. This is a heterogeneous mixture too. Again, you can, might have in one handful, you might have a bunch of pretzels. In another handful, you might have more of those cereal things. Man, I wish I knew what those cereal things were called. They gotta have a, like a name or something. But anyway, you might have more of those cereal things in the second handful. You might have more of those cheese it looking things in the third handful. Another example of heterogeneous mixtures is trail mix. One handful of trail mix, you might have a whole bunch of peanuts. Another handful of trail mix, you might have a whole bunch of M&Ms. Another handful, you might have a whole bunch of pretzels. So trail mix is another example. There are all kinds of examples of heterogeneous mixtures. <coughs> the air that you breathe, if it is not filtered, is a heterogeneous mixture. Because in one breath, you might get 17 particles of dust. And in another breath, you might get 27 particles of dust, along with your oxygen and your nitrogen and all that. Ocean water, if it hasn't been filtered, is a heterogeneous mixture. Again, one piece of ocean water or one cup of ocean water, you might get some fish poop and maybe you get a seashell and maybe you get a couple rocks in there along with salt water. Another cup full, you might get a whole bunch of fish poop and maybe you got half a dead fish. Okay. So you get different things in different amounts in different places and that makes them heterogeneous mixtures. Now don't get confused. Pure salt water, okay, pure salt water that has been filtered okay, is a homogeneous mixture as long as you've completely dissolved all the salt. But ocean water with all the fish poop in it is a heterogeneous mixture because now you got fish poop in different amounts in different places inside the salt water. Don't get confused. Purified pure air, pure oxygen is a homogeneous mixture because you got oxygen all the way through it. So if you were breathing out of an oxygen tank, that would be a homogeneous mixture. But the air that we breathe normally without using an oxygen tank, that's heterogeneous. Because, again, you might get behind a car and get a whole bunch of exhaust in your face one minute. And the next minute, you might just be breathing the air normally, you know, or you might sniff in a bug or something. So that's a heterogeneous mixture. So don't let the two of them confuse you. It depends on whether or not homogeneous mixtures are the same all the way through. Heterogeneous mixtures are different throughout. Now, there is a special type of heterogeneous mixture. It is called a suspension a suspension is a heterogeneous mixture where you have large particles in different densities. And what will happen is the thing that has more density will settle down to the bottom of the container, and the thing that has less density will rise to the top of the container. Suspensions, basically, the way you know if something is a suspension is if it separates itself. You don't have to do anything special to make it separate. It does it by itself. So, for instance, Italian dressing. If I shake up Italian dressing before I use it, it mixes all up. It's still a heterogeneous mixture because I might have different amounts of spices in each tablespoonful, but it mixes all up. But if I then let it set, the spices and the water will sink to the bottom. The oil will rise to the top. Okay? That is called a suspension. Another example, sand and water. If I take sand and water and I shake the bejeebers out of it, for, you know, a minute or so, it may be all mixed together. Still a heterogeneous mixture because you might have more sand in one part than the other. But it'll all mix together. <clears throat> if I then let it sit for just like a couple minutes tops, 
the sand which is more dense will sink to the bottom and the water will float to the top that is a suspension so a suspension is when you have basically settling if something settles you have suspension another great example is paint paint looks like a homogeneous if you mix up paint really well it's actually a homogeneous mixture because basically it looks the same all the way through. When you paint your walls, it's the same all the way through. But if you let that paint sit in your garage for two weeks and then you open it up, you will notice that the dye in the paint sinks to the bottom and the white paint kind of rises to the top. That's why they shake those things at the Home Depot before they give them to you. And it's also why they take a stick and they give you a stick so you can stir the thing up before you use it. Okay? Paint is a suspension. So how can heterogeneous mixtures be separated? Well, there's four ways. Number one is decanting. Decanting is easy. If you have things that have different densities, basically what will happen is one thing will sink to the bottom and the other thing rises to the top and you can pour off the liquid. So basically think of sand. If you have sand in a container, <coughs> the sand will sink to the bottom, the water will rise to the top. You can pour the water off into another container and the sand will stay in the original container. We call that decanting. So decanting is basically when you have a solid and a liquid and the solid settles to the bottom, the liquid rises to the top and then you just pour the liquid off. Okay. Then you have filtration. We did this earlier uh, last week um, with the calcium carbonate. If you notice the calcium carbonate would not completely stir up inside of your cup, you had some that settled to the bottom. You used a filter to filter out the calcium carbonate and then the liquid, which should have been clear water, went into the other cup. You used a filter. It's filtration. Now, guys, I'll be honest with you. Our filters are not spectacular lab-grade filters. So if you notice that you had a little bit of ickiness in your cup or in your water cup afterwards, that's why. They're not pure filters. The third way is centrifuge. If you have very small insoluble particles in a liquid, you can separate them out using a centrifuge. It's basically when you take test tubes and you put them in a little machine and it spins, okay? What happens is the small particles are forced down to the bottom through the spinning and the liquid rises to the top. This is how they separate blood. Your blood, believe it or not, is a heterogeneous mixture. It has white blood cells and red blood cells and platelets in it, and it might have different amounts in different places. Okay, so it's a heterogeneous mixture, and but when they want to separate out your blood so they can test how many white blood cells you have, what they'll do is they'll put your blood in a little test tube, they'll stick it in a centrifuge, and they'll spin that puppy, and they'll spin it really fast. And basically, all the white blood cells and all the platelets and stuff will sink to the bottom of the test tube, and then all the plasma and everything will rise to the top and then they're able to do their tests. So that's called a centrifuge. It's really cool to see the thing spins like crazy. And finally, the last way that you can separate heterogeneous mixtures is to separate a suspension. So if you have two liquids and one of them is more dense than the other one, they will automatically separate themselves. So suspensions, remember, automatically separate themselves. And then you can put them in something called a separating funnel here. And when they separate themselves out, you can turn this little knobby and the water will come out and you can drain out the water and when the oil finally gets down to this level you shut off the little knobby again and then your oil is still inside of your separating funnel and your water is now in whatever container you put it into so that's called a separating funnel and it's used to separate suspensions oh i apologize somebody came to the door and now the dog's going crazy my bad i apologize immensely but this is the end of the video so basically we're done uh, make sure you bring your notes to class and have a good day.